Well, wow. You know, when I first started making these videos, I didn't dream that uh, so many people would like watching them and I'd get so much positive feedback. It's great. You know, I'm headed up on 10,000 subscribers now, and so I guess I should take this a little bit more seriously. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, you know, try to make a bunch of fun little short series over the course of the next year or so. The first one I'm going to make is a what I call a common sense way to train in a puppy. Real easy, uh, and you don't need hardly any equipment. All you got to do, get your little treat pouch like this one, okay? Get you one of these little uh, English show leads. I get these off of Jeffers.com. You can probably get them off eBay. Who knows? Pretty good. And then get you a 20 or 30 foot training line, right? Okay, this is just a long cotton leash. Make sure you get, I like the cotton ones for comfort. The, you know, if you're gonna be training, no, you know, a bunch of dogs and the nylon ones, they really do last a whole lot longer. A little easier to get you a grip on these cotton ones though. All right, so this is all you need to get started. Now let me tell you what to do with them. Okay guys, now to get started, here's what you're gonna do with your treat bag. Each day, you're gonna fill your treat bag up with 50% of your puppy's rations, and you're gonna dole those rations out over the course of the day for calm, attentive behavior. Very simple concept. Imagine that you came to live with me, but we didn't speak the same language. But every day I got up, and I had a pocket full of $100 bills, and I gave you a $100 bill whenever you made me happy. That's how I want my puppy's first week of training to go. I want to put them in a lot of different environments, and I want to use my food as a reward to let them know that the behavior that I just saw is a behavior that I would like to see again the next time we're in that environment, okay? So we call that good student, around, good student week around here. What does a good student do? They sit in their chair and they look at their teacher and they keep their hands to themselves. It's a very simple concept. You can go to any grade school in the world, whichever kids have those qualities are going to make good grades. You don't need to be a psychologist to understand that. As a matter of fact, maybe some psychologists need to watch Uncle Stoney talk here. Now, so we're going to get this puppy and I'm going to get him up here on my elevated surface. Again, I just use this elevated surface for demonstration because it's hard to have the camera follow me around out in the yard. Okay, and I'm going to start in on uh, using my food to reward calm, attentive behavior. Okay, then when we get done with that, I'm going to show you about how to use petting and praise. All right, so we're going to do calm, attentive behavior first. We'll use a calm reward like food. Then we're going to do a little bit of, little bit of uh, active reward, right, with the petting and praise for things like coming and jumping and climbing. All right, so let's get started. Okay, guys, this is Sniper. Uh, of course, even his name Sniper. I mean, look at him. Oh, pit bull. People bring these crazy dogs down here and want me to get them lined out. Well, this one came down here early, so he's going to be pretty easy to get lined out. But the thing is, this dog, you know, he wasn't bred to pay attention to me. He didn't come out of the, the litter going, oh, where's Stoney? I want to pay attention to him. So I got to take this first week that he's here, and uh, I got to kind of just pay him for paying attention to me, you know. I'm going to pay him for just, you know, really basically anything that I'd like to see again. So if I got him up here on this table, like, and he just kind of looks at me, I say, hey, I appreciate that. If I walk down to this end of the table and he follows me, I say, hey, I appreciate that. If I'm talking to you guys and he just keeps his feet on the floor, hey, I appreciate that. I really want your training to kind of work like that. I want you to, this is called free shaping. I'll, you know, that's why I've got you controlling so many of the dog's rations. And so through the course of the day, you can say, hey, man, I appreciate that. Or I would like to see that again in the future. And Sniper's up here and he's like, well, what would you like to see? You're not bossing me or anything. And I'm saying, that's the whole point, son. I don't want to have to boss you. I want you to just be able to go places with me. And then when you go places with me, I want you to figure out a way to behave, right, so I don't have to boss you, you know? You know, some of my videos I call that uh, supervising me into a rich life, okay? And that's what I want him to do. I want him to accept the fact that if he just, like, if he just looks and sees what Stoney's doing, and he basically boils those things to down to, if Stoney's looking at me, we're probably gonna do something together. If Stoney's looking at someone else or talking to someone else or busy, right, then I should just kind of be calm. I can stand up or sit down or lay down or go get my Kong and chew it. I don't really care. I just want him to understand that if I'm busy, he's calm, right? This is, our, this is how we begin our impulse control, you know? So he's up here and I'm just giving him treats ever so often for being up here on this table and being calm, right? He's not super attentive to yet, yet because he just got here. But you're gonna see over the course of these videos how all this switches around to where he's like Floyd, he's just back there, really calm, really quiet, really attentive, okay? Now, let's move on to getting his leash on. Okay, now here comes, this is where we start introducing the leash to him. I've got him up here, and he's just up here being kinda of calm and attentive. He's kinda of hot right now, but... So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put my leash on him, and I'm gonna give him a treat. Good. 
I'm going to take my leash off of him. I'm going to move down here. And I'm going to hold my loop out. He puts his head through there. I give him a treat. Good. I appreciate that. You know, I really want him to start to associate getting this leash put on with something good. Now I'm going to put this leash on him and I'm going to kind of cinch it up. And I'm just going to let him drag it around. This is one of the most important things you can do when you first get your puppy. Just put your leash on him and just kind of let them drag it around. If they want to look and see what my son's doing over there behind the camera, which he shouldn't be doing right now, that's fine, okay? Uh, but what I have to have is I have to have that dog thinking in terms of like accepting that leash, accepting being on the table, accepting the fact that I can't be talking to him right now because I'm talking to you guys. Very simple process. You're just paying him for not being bad, okay? Come on, buddy. Good. Good boy. Okay. All right. Good sniper. Good. Okay. Now, next thing you're going to use is you're going to use your long line. Okay, now what's this long line for? Remember what I'm really after, okay, guys? If you ask me what's the first most important thing in dog training, it's exercise. What's the second most thing in dog important thing? It's exercise. Third, it's exercise. Listen, exercise is the king of getting dog to mind, right? When I'm exercising my dog, I want my dog to have the maximum amount of mental and physical stimulation, right? Well, if I've got him all tied up close to me, making him try to walk with his head by my knee, dominating his every move. You know, he's really not going to be out there exploring like I want him to. I want him to have a positive expectation when we go outside. That's what this long line's for. As much as possible. Now, you know, I got him on this little leash, and I put it on him whenever I need to. Uh, but as much as possible around here, since my whole place is fenced in, I don't even have a leash on him. I don't hardly use it at all, really. Okay, but like if you live in the suburbs, you live in the city, eh, got to be careful because they can wander off in the road or who knows what can happen. So whenever I'm in the suburbs of the city, what I do is I've got this little leash and I've got my long line. And as soon as I get out to where I don't have to have them really close to my body, I just kind of put that together like that. And then I just take off walking. And when I take off walking, whenever the dog comes back and checks in with me, kind of looks at me as calm and attentive, of course, I'll give him a little treat. But what I'm really looking to do is let him get out there and explore. And when I see him exploring and doing active things, I see him climbing and jumping, that's when I'm going to be really petting him and really playing with him. That's when I use my petting and praise. It's for active behaviors. So food for the calm behaviors, food for around the house, food for in the car, food for when you're practicing, you know, doing vet exams like this, okay? Practicing getting him up here to kind of be still and relax, you know? Okay, anything where you want him to be calm, that's where you use your food. Anything where you want him to be excited, that's where you use your petting and your praise and your tug and your ball. Okay, so let's go out in the field and I'm going to show you how I use the long line and the uh, English shoulder. Okay, so once you're out, you find you a nice park, nice place to play, nice field in my case. You got your long line on your dog. Well, listen, you want to just be able to walk around and give him as much freedom as possible, right? So this is about 25 foot long when I put both leashes together. So I'm just going to walk around and I'm going to be using my leash just to keep the dog kind of within a safety zone, okay? And while I'm outside, I'm going to be looking for small challenges. Now, what, we, what we're talking about when we're talking about small challenges is little things that kind of help the dog develop mentally and physically. And that's really where your petting and praise come in. So watch, I'm going to find me a little small challenge here, this log I drug up here, and uh, then I'll get over the small challenge, I'll run around out in the field with him, and I'll come back and do another small challenge. This is really where your petting and praise is going to come together. So I'm going to back up, look, I've got my long line, you can't even see the little dog right now. But since I have my long line, I know that I can keep him from going too far away. So I can sit down and call him, hey sniper, come on buddy, good boy. Oh, what a fine animal. And here he comes. I've got down here on my small challenge. I'm going to talk to him. Oh, he's a good boy. Can you jump over that old log? Get your leash untangled if it's tangled up. Oh, let's see. And he might think, no, Stoney, I can't jump that log. I've never jumped a log before. But I say, hey, come on, buddy. You can do it. Oh, oh, let's see. Come on. Come on. Oh, what a good dog. Oh, he's a good dog. You really got to make over them, see? The people make a big mistake when they're doing their, like, sit, sit, and they pet the dog, and, like, they're trying to down and pet the dog. Listen, save your active reward and praise for when the dog does something hard, like jumping and climbing. Come on, sniper. Oh, it's a good boy. Oh, what a fun animal. Oh, come on, sniper. Oh, what a good boy. And see, by having this long leash combo on him, oh, good boy. I can love on him. You know, but I don't have to, like, have him right here making him feel like he's trapped. He's out here feeling like we're doing this together. Oh, come on, Tiger, what are you doing? 
Oh, you're climbing the old log? Oh, good boy. Okay, guys, now when you're out there doing small challenges, make sure you're interactive with your puppy. The more interactive you are with the puppy and the environment, the better the puppy's gonna do, right? Okay, so look, Sniper and I are here. He's being calm right now, so I used a food tree to reward being calm. Now watch me. I'm gonna be interactive with this, with these steps. Oh, come on, buddy. And I'm gonna be excited. I'm gonna sound, oh, good boy. What a fine animal. Okay, good boy. And let him really know that we're out in the world doing small challenges. Oh, it's good for both of us, isn't it? Now, if he gets stuck, you can always use your leash a little bit. That's why we keep this long line on it. Oh, it's a smart sniper. Oh, it's a good boy. Right? But listen, if this dog thinks that you're in it with him, oh, it's a good boy. He's going to be much more likely to be brave and to be outgoing. Oh, come on, sniper. You can do it. See, if he goes to refuse, I can use that leash. Oh, what a good boy. Let him know coming with Uncle Stoney is a great thing. Oh, wow. What a good dog. Now get over here and I love him. I love him, love him. See, it's active because what we were doing was active. Now watch this. Immediately. Start this as soon as you get him. Immediately now, I took my attention away from him. And now I want him to be calm and attentive. I go back to my food work. I start practicing from day one. <clears throat> I'll get them real excited, okay? And then I'll take my attention away from them. And I want, my, I want the dog to start to understand from a young age, as soon as I take my attention away from them, they're gonna need to be patient for a little while. The, the more tired they are, of course, the easier it is. Look at Sniper, he's pretty tired right now, so it's pretty easy to get him to stand there with his feet on the ground. Okay, but I'm still gonna reward it. Remember, I don't care how I get the behavior. I'm gonna reward it. If I see it and I like it, I wanna see it again, and I'm gonna say, I love it. But now, when I put my attention back on the dog, then I want him to know we're fixing to do something together. Oh, it's a good boy. Like, we might get out here and conquer these big steps. Oh, good boy. Come on, Sniper, let's do them together. We can do it. Okay, what a fine animal. Good boy. Oh, oh, good boy. And then, oh, you can do anything you want with them. You know, people ask me, should I let the dog get on me and whatever. I say, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Oh, because right now, sniper and stony time is what it is. It's sniper and stony time, right? Long as my attention is on him, oh, we can be crazy wild. Crazy wild. Oh, my gosh. But watch. I want him to know right off the bat, if I have to take my attention away from him, talk to somebody, he's got to get calm and attentive. So I move my hand up this leash, okay? I get my food treat ready, and if he doesn't try to jump on me or scratch me or lick me or bark at me, then I say, hey, that's the right answer. Everything's going to start, okay, the same way, okay? Clear information, clear signals. The most clear signal that you can give your dog is when I'm excited, you get excited, and when I'm calm, you get calm and you get patient, right? And if you start that off, listen, everything else gets real easy because you got you a good student right? Good students, they sit in their chair, and when a teacher's talking to them, then they talk back. But if the teacher's not talking to them, they focus on being calm and quiet and having good manners. All right, snort. Okay, right. Now, what we're going to do here, see, once you're, when you're out, you know, and it's sunny and it's hot, a lot of times, your dog, he's not going to want to go with you when it's time to go back to the truck or when it's time to, to, to continue on your walk if he's found something he likes doing. Okay, that's where your long line really comes in handy because I'm going to take off and I want to be able to get a fair ways away from him but still influence him. I don't want him to feel like I have to get up there close to him and grab his collar or, uh, you know, put a short leash back on him or, you know, I'm not always going to leave something fun and make him walk with his head right by my knee. I'm just going to let him know, starting right off the bat, okay, that he's got to come with me. So we've got a little bit of you know, a little bit of focus work in, we've got some small challenges in, and then our long line is there when the newness is worn off that. Every training session is going to be the same. You get your food out and the puppy's real excited, or you start your petting and praise and they're real excited. But towards the end of your training session, they always kind of like, oh yeah, listen guys, I've had enough attention, I've had enough food, and uh, I'm just going to lay over here in the shade. Or I'm going to go play with this other dog. That long line makes you powerful. Okay, so this is why we put it on him in the first place. So I call him, come on sniper, if he doesn't want to come, see, I, you know, I, as I'm walking away, I can put a little pressure on the leash, and he has to come. Oh, good boy. Now as he's coming, I'm gonna bend down. Oh, it's a good boy coming like this. He's such a smarty. And I'm gonna make over him. I'm gonna tell him he's a good boy, I appreciate him coming, right? And so by having the long line on him, good boy. By having the long line on him, I was able to take a situation where he had gotten bored 
with doing the, you know, the small challenges. He had gotten full, so he wasn't that hungry anymore, but I was still able to influence him and get my way from a distance, and that's very important. See, that's one of the downsides. Everybody emails me like, Stoney, well, I get this food, and you know, after a few minutes, my dog stops paying attention to me. Okay, that's where your long line comes in. That's what keeps them in, in check, okay, when they're tired, when they're distracted, when they're not hungry anymore. Okay, so right then you saw that little dog, he was tired. We had jumped over his log a bunch of times. We'd been up there doing food work, and he just had been laying down. And if I had just walked away, he probably would have been like, well, okay, Stoney, I'll see you later. But since I had that long line on him, when I called him, I had a way of making sure that what I asked him to do was going to happen, right? Now, so he had to accept that it was going to happen, but then I made it so that it was a good thing, right? So he accepted it, and then as he started coming, I started making over him, good boy, and playing with him, right? And that's what you've got to do. you got to start in right off the bat, using your food all day long, every day, to say, I appreciate that, and I appreciate that, and I appreciate that. Okay, for calm, attentive behavior, you just can't beat a controlled feeding schedule. Now, for active behavior, like jumping, climbing, uh, coming real fast, you wanna really get out there and pet them and play with them, love on them, okay? But you need your long line on there to go ahead and from the very first day you've got your dog to make them understand that, you know, refusal, not really a, an option, right? So even if you don't want the food, even if you don't want petting and praise, there are just some things that are going to happen, and you might as well learn to accept that from the very first day. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow.